guys, I'm back here with news from the future. Let's go with Tesla. Elon Musk went in a podcast where he said that Tesla wants to offer their pickup for less than 50k, so the starting price will be 49k max. He insists that the pickup will not look like a regular pickup, so if you're expecting an F-150 by Tesla, this will not happen. But he says it'll be better than the legendary Ford pickup in terms of functionality and a better sports car than Porsche. Musk also talked about the second-generation Roadster and said it's just an icing on the SX and 3 cake. Tesla will most likely produce about 10,000 cars annually, so Roadster 2 is not there to advance Tesla's mission, more like take away the halo effect ICE cars have. But what about a more affordable car than Model 3? Elon says that it's not like they just don't want to produce an electric car for $20,000, it's just they don't know how at the moment. When asked if they're going to launch something like App Store or Google Play for their cars, he said there is no point in that at the moment. There aren't enough cars and it's pointless to compete with billions of phones. But it might happen in the future, when there are more cars and probably full self-driving. Tesla removed Homelink from standard Model 3 features. It automatically opened garage doors. Tesla priced the ability to not reach for a key at $300. This will require a visit to a service center. Tesla launched a wireless charger that can charge two phones at once for $125. Deliveries will start in two to three weeks. But the thing is, you can find an awfully similar charger on Amazon for just 50 bucks. Tesla made changes to their design studio. Previously, Tesla displayed prices after gas savings and other incentives. But after fair criticism, they made it more transparent. It's not perfect, because Tesla is pretty optimistic about how electricity rates compare to gas, but it's at least more clear now. Tesla cars have an advantage over ICE cars in terms of consumption, but now that there are more EVs, we can compare them, which is exactly what Next Move has done. They took different car versions with different tires. Cars moved at the average speed of 70 miles per hour for 50 miles. And here are the results. Model 3 turned out to be the best in terms of consumption, and Model S the best at range. There is new information that GM and FCA have been buying federal greenhouse gas credits in the US from Tesla. Over the years, Tesla has made over $2 billion from the sale of environmental credits, but it's probably ending soon. The only thing that automakers hate more than making EVs is paying Tesla for not making them. Tesla recently upgraded Model S and X with a new adaptive suspension. This is how the old and the new versions look like. Tesla says that since they developed it in-house, they'll be able to improve it through software updates. It turns out there is one more way to bypass the new charging limit at the supercharger station. You can just drag that line to the right. Most people don't even charge to 100%, but if you need to, it's easy to do. By the way, at the podcast we talked about, Musk said that they plan to replace first-generation chargers to third-generation soon. Model S caught fire and burned to the ground while charging at the supercharger station in Belgium. The car was placed in the pool to avoid it catching fire again. Tesla has yet to comment on the situation. We now know the price of the Chinese-made Model 3. The first version to be made is Standard Plus. It won't be any different from the American-made car, but it'll cost $7,000 less than the imported one. Those who make an order now will get their car in 6 to 10 months. Tesla website temporarily stopped working after a wave of orders came in. Tesla started selling right-hand drive Model 3s at other markets in Australia, Hong Kong, Japan, New Zealand, Ireland and Macau. At the moment, only Standard Plus and Performance versions are available. Musk sent a letter to staff saying that there is no demand shortage but they have to deal with deliveries for a good second quarter. They'll also have to work on the cost of deliveries from the factory to the end customer. Tesla chose the Fremont factory for the Model Y production, according to CNBC. Musk confirmed it in the podcast. They'll have to combine Model S and X production lines for that, 
because they take up too much space. CNBC also thinks that Model S and X with a new interior is coming this September. Electric says that they have information that Tesla CTO JB Straubel is rarely at the Palo Alto office anymore. And now, it turns out, he has exercised 15,000 options and sold them for $2.8 million. He still owns about 300,000 Tesla shares, and it's not clear why he hasn't been around as much. It's probably nothing to worry about, but nevertheless, Musk is at Tesla because of JB, and these news are hardly what Tesla needs now. Oh, and here's a funny story. Tesla's founder, Martin Eberhard, who worked in companies like Volkswagen and Lucid Motors after leaving Tesla, founded a startup called Enevit that worked on electric car batteries. A year after, it was acquired by SF Motors that was after Enevit's technology and engineering expertise. It turns out, a couple months after the deal, Eberhard left the company took top management and engineers with him and founded a new company that will also be making batteries for EVs. He didn't really bother with making up a new name and just spelled Inevit backwards. And here we are, there's a totally new company called Tiveni that can later be sold to someone else. Berkeley police got a video shot by Sentry Mode. A man broke into the car and Tesla recorded him. You could clearly see his face. The police that was investigating a series of break-ins at the time recognized Derek Connerly, a convicted rapist on parole. As a result, Connerly was arrested. And more on Autopilot. Tesla owner said that Autopilot saved him from an accident, but he only found out about that after watching what his cameras recorded. And here's Model 3 trying to escape the semi. It performed great, managed to not turn over due to its low center of gravity. Tesla Energy We haven't heard a lot of news about this division lately, and Musk said it's because it's been self-starved for quite a while because of Model 3 production. But it looks like everything is getting back to normal. Tonic Energy, the UK renewable energy supplier, is getting 250 Tesla Powerwall that they'll set up at their customers' homes. SpaceX All major Falcon Heavy parts came to the launch site for the mission that will happen on 22nd of June. The only thing left is assembling the rocket and putting 24 satellites in the fairing. They'll have to be delivered to three different orbits, and in order to do this, they'll have to complete four separate burns for the first time. Center core will be new, and side boosters are going to be reused from Arabsat 6A mission. Boosters will land at the site and a platform. CRS-17 Cargo Dragon came back successfully. It was its second flight and an 18th mission of this kind for SpaceX. RadarSat mission for Canadian Space Agency is scheduled for June 11th. Falcon 9 will launch three satellites. And John left his autograph on the Falcon 9 booster. Raptor SN4 came to Boca Chica and is being set up. Tests have been rescheduled and will happen no earlier than June 11th. New Starship and Super Heavy presentation is scheduled for June 20th, and the website is up and running. Although, it's not that exciting. Gwyn Shawwell came to MIT where she talked SpaceX failures, their goals, and the fact that we're 18 months away from the Starship flight and the company is going to send cargo to Mars in five years. Meanwhile, the company's market cap grew to $33.3 billion. She also shared information about Starlink satellites. They're still on their way to the intended orbit and it'll take three to four weeks. 56 of them are performing as expected, and four have problems. Shawwell says SpaceX is trying to make them less visible from Earth and is working on atmospheric reentry in order not to create space debris. And that's all for today. Thank you for watching, and we might be preparing a surprise for you for next week. Please hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you soon.